Hello, my name is Hey Boxjunge and welcome to my Stealing Artifacts Guide. Artifacts is the best thieving trading method for overall account progression, both for mains and Iron Man, because you are able to train other skills like fire making, crafting, and herbore alongside it. But even without multi skilling, it's still possible to get better XP rates than blackjacking. And it's also the most fun way of training thieving because you cannot fail stealing artifacts unless you make a mistake yourself, which should never happen again after you have watched this guide. Alright, some quick requirements for the method. You need level 49 thieving to unlock it, but for iron accounts it might be better to start at level 50 thieving alongside 50 agility so you can buy a lockpick from Martin Twait. So yeah, a lockpick is the second requirement. And lastly, 75% Piscorilius favor. At the time of making this guide, this is still required, but in the near future, the favor system will be removed, so then it's no longer a requirement. So the basic idea of the method is to get a task from Captain Kellett here in the big hall at the east of Piscorilius. He will tell you to go to one of the six possible houses to steal an artifact that you need to deliver back to him without teleporting. Because the artifact will be removed from your inventory if you do so, and even logging out with one in your inventory will remove it as well. And then when you deliver it, you get a big XP drop and some coins and then you repeat. But this can be made a lot easier with a handful of items and plugins. First off, we have the Book of the Dead, or the Cardist Memoirs with all the house quests completed. So you can teleport back after getting a new assignment from Captain Kellett. Back to the middle, so you save a lot of time instead of having to run all this way over here. Every page you add gives 8 charges. And when you complete Kingdom Divided, it turns into the Book of the Dead. And will gain an extra 20 charges for a total of 60. And again with the upcoming changes to Corrent. This will be increased to give 20 teleports per house quest. And 150 extra from a Kingdom Divided. For a total of 250. But I would advise to have at least 40 teleports in your book. Otherwise you're going to be losing too much time per hour charging the book. And to charge the book, you either want to have the medium or hard current diary for 5 or unlimited teleports to the current woodland. Or you want to have a Xerix talisman to teleport to the Xerix outlook. So if you teleport there, you want to have soul, law, mind and body runes with you. And then run over to the old memorial here and if you come from the xerix lookout you want to run all the way over here and as a statue you just want to either left click the statue press spacebar one and then four or just simply use the book on the statue to save some inventory space you can bring a room pouch to store three or four of the runes in there if you have the divine pouch you can store four and of course you want these items to be equipped. And when you have the book equipped you can swap the left click option to teleport back to Piscorilius. So if you hold shift and then select the Fisher's Flute you can just simply left click and teleport. And with this method you're going to be running a lot. So bring Graceful if you have it to save some run energy. And a way to restore your run energy so either stamina potions super energy potions or the POH in your pool if you are an Iron Man. And also the Ring of Endurance is quite helpful at this method. And you want to have a way to teleport to a bank quickly so you can stock up on more supplies that you are multi-skilling or to grab more energy or stamina potions. Now we have a couple of plugins to make your life a lot easier here at Artifacts. First of course the Stealing Artifacts plugin itself that will tell you which house you need to steal from. It highlights the letters and the drawers. And it also highlights the patrolman to be a little bit more visible. Then we have the GPU plugin, so you can actually see further than like 10 squares. I have my draw distance set at 90, that's the maximum. Ground markers, of course. So I will explain these like later in the guide, but these are very important to uh, make sure you're always on the correct tile so you don't get caught. Tile indicators for your true tile, so you know where your character actually is. Same with Sepulchre. And then we have NPC indicators. And if I turn this on, all the guards will have a tile that is like moving with them. That is their true tile. And you want to right click 
and then tag the guard, then tag style for true tile, and then you can give them a nice color as well to stand out from the tile markers. And their true tiles will be very important alongside the ground markers, so, so make sure these are enabled. Otherwise my other explanations will be a lot harder to understand. And lastly we have custom menu swaps, because right now all these NPCs here have like a million options that you can like misclick on, even trick or treat because it's like uh, Halloween stuff. So if you turn on custom menu swaps and then fill this into the custom heights, I will put this in the description so you can just copy it. But now every NPC, the pirates, the men, the women, they will just have like no left click option. So you won't be like accidentally misclicking on this guy and then getting caught by this guard. So it is definitely a must for this method. To make this method actually work, you need to set up the two guards guarding the exits. This one over here in the east and this one over here in the southeast. The plugin indicates if they are lured or not and currently they are both not lured. But you have to lure them in a way that they will face towards the water. So you can just pass freely behind them. So to do so, you first want to steal an artifact. And while you run past this guy, you want to see like which way he's facing. Because that is important for setting this one up. Because you want to like either approach it from this side or the other side. And in this scenario, only this side will work. So yeah, grab the artifact. So once you have your artifact, you always want to set up this guy first. So let's follow behind this patrolman and wait over here. Once he is passed, you just want to stand on this tile, like south of this uh, post. Then walk under him and then click the stairs. So you will climb up and then climb down. And he is alert, so he can't like see you anymore. But you still want to stay one tile distance from this guard when you pass. Because if you go stand over here, he will still see you. So make sure to keep your distance. And then because the other one was facing this way, we want to go around. And to set this one up, you want to make use of the black uh, tile markers that I put in here. So if you just stand over here with your run enabled or stand over here with uh, your run enabled. But if you stand over here, you still want to make sure that you don't get caught by the guard like coming around the corner here. And the same goes for like running towards him when he's over here. So now that the guard is passed, you can just click under him and then you want to teleport away somewhere so I have a Camelot teleport but you do not want to use the Koran teleport to um, like Piscarillius again because then he's gonna facing like to this way still so I will just use my Kemi teleport and he is alert now and again with this one as well always stay one tile distance from him when passing so this green tile will be your best friend and if you do happen to mess up one of the lured guards, you know how to set them up now. So don't be lazy and start hopping worlds to find someone else doing this method. Please set them up yourself. Before I start explaining every single house, I want to briefly explain the colors of the tiles. You can find these tiles in the paste bin in the description. And to import them in your room light, you right click the world map and then select import. So all the green tiles that you see, those are tiles that you want to be standing on or waiting on before skipping past the guards. They aren't safe in all locations, but most of them are. The white tiles are linked to certain green tiles as they serve as a checkpoint for the guard's position. Alright, a quick example. If I'm waiting on this green tile here, I need to wait until this guard hits this white tile. And then I can pass towards the green and like clear it check perfectly. The red tiles can largely be ignored as they are serving as an endpoint for the guards, but these are mainly for newer players so they won't be scared that the guard is just gonna walk towards them. And then lastly we have the orange ones which are for fire making to squeeze in some extra fires before you go up a ladder and stealing from the drawers. But I'll talk about the multi-skilling stuff at the end because I first want you to understand the basics of every house. Alright, let's go over how to escape from every house, starting with the easiest one here in the southeast. 
Once you have stolen the jewelry, you want to head downstairs. And then depending on where this guard is, you only have to click on this green square and then just keep going and then you have made it out of here. But once the guard has passed this tile, you cannot make it anymore, so you want to wait. But if the guard is on or before the tile, then you can just simply walk past it. Next up is the southern house, and after you have stolen the jewelry, of course go downstairs. And once here, you want to path through this green tile. And if he's walking away from you, you can just simply path through the green tile on the bridge. But when he's coming towards you, you want to pay attention again to the white tile. So if the guard is before this white tile or on it, while you move, then you will still be able to make it. And then you want to path through this green tile, and depending if the guard is close or not, you can just simply head to this green one and make it out of here. And if you're on this green tile and this guard is close, you want to wait until he hits the white one and then skip past him. And make sure to always keep one tile distance from this guard, so always make sure that you're on the green tile if you're passing through here. Next up we have the northern house, and this one is a little bit more complicated because of the guard patrolling around. Once you have stolen the artifact, you want to keep an eye on the guard that is walking around the house, but also pay attention to the guard over here coming towards you. If both of the guards are like pretty far away and this one is before this white tile, you can just send it all the way. But if the patrolling guard is coming back around again, you want to go stand on one of the green tiles. But you do want to make sure to keep an eye out on this guard when you do so. So if the patrolling guard is between this and this white tile, you want to path towards this green tile. And then wait for the guard's true tile to hit the white tile. And then you can just simply turn the corner. But when he's already past this one, you want to go to this green tile next to the pillar. And wait until he hits the white tile and then you can leave. And lastly, when he's already getting close to the door, you just want to stand on the green tile in the door. And then when the guard hits the white tile, you want to go, but you do want to pay attention to the other guard, because it's very easy to just focus on one guard and then the other one sees you. Before I'm going to cover the final three houses, I need to first explain the bridge guard, since he's a little special and you need to cross the bridge for all of the three houses. So most people will only pass this guy waiting here and then go stand next to him when he's facing away and then turn the corner when he is turning around again. And what I mean with this guy is extra special is that he's extra blind. This orange tile with the word safe on it is just a safe spot for this guard. He will just never see you if you stand on this. With this in mind you can do some pretty interesting skips here to speed up your XP per hour by quite a bit instead of just waiting all the time on this guard. You do always want to stay on the west side of this pillar before initiating the skip. But as soon as the guard's true tile is besides the safe tile, you can just simply skip past him and he just won't see you. You can even skip past him when his true tile is already there, but his character is about to stop moving. Or when you are a bit too late to stand on the green tile besides him, just make sure that you make it to the safe tile before he turns around again. Make sure that you understand this bridge part I just explained, so that you can put it into practice when coming back from the three final houses. So let's start with Northwest and work our way down. After stealing the artifact and climbing down the ladder, you want to move to this green tile first and then to the one west of the post. Because if you stand in between these tiles, you will be seen by the guard if he's like facing towards you. And then just skip past the guard in whatever way is possible for you. I'll give you one more example when I'm putting the skip into practice. Let's play that one more time in slow motion. First to the green tile and then to the second green tile. And when I see that the guard is besides or past the safe tile, I just keep going. And for the western house, it's kind of similar as the northwest. Just make sure that your true tile is on the second green tile before skipping past the guard. Another example of a problem for any of the western houses is when you are past the bridge guard here. 
but you still need to make your way past the patrolling North House Guard to make it into freedom. So in this freeze frame, the North House Guard is before this white tile still when I'm able to start moving again. So you are able to go around when he's before this white tile, but in this specific scenario, the other guard is blocking that route, so you still have to follow behind the guard. And when you do follow behind him, stand on this green tile here, and wait until the guard's true tile hits the next white, and then you can run to the trusty green tile and then to safety. And then lastly, we have the southwestern house. This one is the furthest away, but it's also the most reclined, as you can just click the pier into the distance with the GPU plugin and just... Uh, do some multi-skilling or just wait. And when arriving here we just have one more patrolling guard that we have to deal with. So after you have stolen the artifact and went downstairs. When the guard is closed you just want to stand in the door opening on the green tile. And then when the guard's true tile hits the white tile close to you then just turn the corner. When he's a bit further away you want to stand on the green tile outside of the building. And then when he hits the other white tile, you just want to go then. And lastly, when he's like behind the building, and but before the first white square on the left, then you can just send it all the way. And then maneuver just like with the other two western houses to the green tile, and then past the bridge guard and the other guards. Before I get into multi-skilling, I quickly want to show you a super easy Captain Kellett alt lure. And this can save you a couple ticks every artifact. It is pretty minimal and you're probably better off just making money on the alt somewhere else, but I still wanted to show it. So how to set it up? You want to grab aggro from a spider or a rat, because they do not hit you, they have a max hit of zero. And then when Captain Kellett is either in this place like he is now or over here, you want to step on tile 1 so the spider is on like the spider tile. Now I am blocking this like pathway and the spider is blocking the pathway to here so you can only walk here and here. So now we have to wait until he is like past tile number 2 or tile number 3. Now he is past the tiles, now we move to number 2, the spider is still blocking him, and when we move to number 3, now that I'm on tile 3, he can only walk to me this way. Now the spider is already cornering him in, so he can only walk across here. Once he's past the yellow, we walk over here. And now he is only able to uh, walk in this hallway. But what we also can do is to wait for him to step on the yellow tiles here. Then we can even block him in a better way. Like when he's over here, his other spider is kind of in the way. If you do this, now he is only able to walk on these four tiles and he's like super close to the entrance. But you do not want to run under this account. Because then he is able to, like, pass through again. And now the last part of the guide, multi-skilling. This is where artifact really outshines any other thieving method. Because it already involves teleporting back to the middle every time, you don't lose much time grabbing more supplies. And you are also able to train skills that are normally only trained at a bank, because you only need a couple items in your inventory for actually doing artifacts. So you have a lot of room for skills like fire making, crafting and even herb lore. When multi-skilling you want to leave your rune pouch and fort rune in the bank for more space. And just take it out when you need to recharge the book. And then bank it the next time you're at the bank. I'm not really going to cover crafting and herb lore because it's very straightforward. Just cut the gems, blow the glass or make the potion while you run the artifacts. But Herblore is a bit tricky because you can only make the Ancient Brew and Forgotten Brew while running. But making Ancient Brews is giga expensive, so I would advise only doing Forgotten Brews at 91 Herblore. All the others, like Stamina, Extended Anti-Fire and Anti-Venom Pots, will stall you when running, so they won't work. And doing normal potions is a bit meh, because you only can fit like 11 potions in your inventory, so... I would prioritize crafting if you were an Iron Man and fire making if you are a main account. 
And for fire making, you also want to take a mahogany log and a knife to start a tree tick cycle without having to like kneel over to light your first fire every time. Also a log basket from forestry is pretty good to take with you as you need to bank a lot less when fire making. You can do two to three artifacts before you need to bank again most of the time. And with some of the houses there are orange tiles and if you light a fire on that tile the fire making movement will push you either next to a ladder or drawer. And if you don't lose a tick you can still maintain your fire making cycle after going up a ladder or looting from one of the drawers. So that you can squeeze in a couple more fires per lap without losing too much time. Because you still want to maximize your thieving XP per hour because you're getting way more fire making XP than thieving usually. So for the western house, after you have lit your fire upstairs, you want to wait a tick before clicking on the drawers. And then the next tick light your fire. Then loot the drawers and light the fire immediately. And after that fire you want to wait a tick as well before clicking on the ladder. And then you can squeeze in four fires here at the top floor and then two more at the bottom. Northwest you can do the same thing, but you don't want to wait a tick. You just want to be tick perfect for the whole thing here. And with the southern house you want to wait a tick again after lighting your first fire upstairs and wait a tick after lighting the fire at the drawers. So that you can also light four fires upstairs. So yeah, that was my guide for stealing artifacts plus multi-skilling. I hope it was useful for you and I think it will be very useful for those who will pick the current region in the upcoming Trailblazers League. Because artifacts is probably gonna be your training method for thieving. So hopefully we can avoid messing up each other's guard setups uh, during the league because of this video. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching and leave a comment down below of what you want to see the next guide be about. And yeah, see you later.